Argentina does not make any bones about taking pride in its unblemished European heritage. But let's ask ourselves, is it possible for a country whose beginning was so closely tied to the exploitation of enslaved Africans now claim a racial profile that excludes Africans? So how did Argentina become a so-called white country? Welcome to the Sankofa Pan-African series. Please support us through Patreon or by buying me coffee. Subscribe and turn on your notification buttons. And please don't forget to check out our new website, sankofastorybooks.com, for history, Afrocentric stories, and other resources for our children. Well, as we know, in order to arrive at who, where, or what we are today, we need to look back at history. So let's start by debunking a popular saying in Argentina, which goes, Mexicans descend from the Aztecs, Peruvians from the Incas, but Argentinians descend from the ships. That belief in a strictly European Argentina continues and even as, as at 2018, Mauricio Macri, the immediate past president of Argentina, declared at the World Economic Forum in Davos that we are descendants from Europe. Now, this Eurocentric view should be vehemently disputed because it is factually untrue. And Argentinian researchers and activists like um, Ali Delgado and Patricia Gomez, both of who are women of African descent, are providing evidence to the contrary through recent studies of population surveys and genetics. As Ali Delgado points out, this kind of saying stems from a refusal to confront Argentina's racist views. And um, according to Patricia Gomez, it used to be said that there were no blacks and hence there was no racism. History shows that there was a thriving population in the country now known as Argentina way before Europeans arrived there. So we know the country had inhabitants uh, there before the Europeans arrived. So in the late 15th century, the Quebrada de Huaca, who were native to the area, which was rich in precious metals, were conquered by the Inca Empire under Topa Inca Yupanqui. The reason for the conquest was to take over the supply of the abundant precious metals like uh, silver, zinc, and copper that were found in the country. Now, the Incans then ruled the area for about half a century until the arrival of the Spanish in the 16th century. The first European who is recorded to have um, laid eyes on the area that we now know as Buenos Aires was Juan Diaz de Solis. He sailed up what is now the Rio de la Plata and renamed it Mar Dolce, or Sweet Sea. Ferdinand Magellan stumbled there in 1520. He was Portuguese. And Sebastian Cabot, another mercenary who was on a treasure hunting expedition arrived there in 1526. It was Cabot who returned to Spain and convinced the Spanish monarch that more wealth was to be made in the region. The Argentina we now know was only conquered after repeated attempts at colonization by the Spanish. 
in order to fully exploit this land that was so rich in precious metals, the Spanish needed slaves. According to Alex Baruki, whose research traces every ship that carried enslaved people to the Americas, the number of slaves who arrived in the region of the River Plate is almost half of those who arrived in the U.S. As such, at some point, the country had a robust African population because of the slaves who were brought there. Census records kept by Argentina's Spanish colonists show that by 1778, Africans and Afro-descendants made up 37% of the population of what is now the country of Argentina. At that time, in some provinces, their population was more than 50%. So people of African descent were heavily involved in Argentina's struggle for independence from Spain in 1812. So what happened to them? Well, Gomez and Delgado argue that their erasure is primarily the result of racist 19th century leaders who set out to obliterate Argentina's rich black culture from the nation's history and collective consciousness. Gomez argues that one of the things that they did was to manipulate census records in order to erase black people, first from the statistics and then from the history books. She writes, and I quote, from the end of the 19th century, the state meticulously began to make us invisible, to present Argentina as homogeneous and of European descent, end of quote. Argentina's aggressive pro-European immigration policy was actually initiated under the 1853 constitution at a time when the country's post-independence thinkers and politicians were obsessed with the idea of contrast between um, so-called civilized uh, say, peoples, so civilization and barbarism. The seventh president of Argentina, Domingo Samiento, actually wrote a book on civilization and barbarism in 1845, in which he categorized Afro-descendants as at the barbaric end of, you know, one of those, their crazy skills. As such, Argentina welcomed the mass migration of 7 million Europeans, mostly from Spain and Italy, between 1850 and 1950. This helped create the kind of whitewashed racial profile that Argentinians wanted and now claim. In order to solidify the erasure of Africans, it wasn't even until the census of 2010, as recently as 2010, that an option was even included for Argentinians who wanted to self-identify as Afro-descendants. They did not have that option in any forms, any census forms, or any forms which collected uh, uh, the statistics. Sadly, a genetic study conducted by the University of Brasilia in 2008 found that only 9% of current-day Argentinians are of African uh, ancestry. In essence, what this means is that the influx of Europeans um, has, and then the fact that some of them would intermarry, have kids with um, Africans, uh, people of African descent, has continued to dilute the genetic uh, pool and uh, erase the African genes. Anyway, for an in-depth analysis of Argentina's whitening process, I strongly recommend that you read Erica Dennis Edwards' brilliant book based on extensive research. 
It is titled Hiding in Plain Sight, Black Women, the Law, and the Making of a White Argentine Republic. Thanks for watching. Don't forget uh, uh, to subscribe and turn on your notification buttons. Continue to support us on Patreon or by buying me coffee. Please check out our website, sankofastorybooks.com for history, Afrocentric stories and other resources for our children.